Nice. Thank you so much. This is exactly what we are looking for. To see which skills do you lack within the industry. And what is it that you want the institution to do for you? So what we're going to do is to start talking to each other. To say in your industry, if I'm, I'm, I'm interested in knowing that particular student, whether it came from a hotel or from the university. And if this is to our student, we go back to the workshops, the college has workshops, and look at what is it that they're doing. And yourselves as an uh, industry, you come to our workshops. You come, you must please come and visit the college and engage with our students and lecturers there to say, uh -uh, this is not how we do things. Yes, you won't qualify as a proper auto electrician if you don't have one, two, three, four. Industry won't be able to And for all those traits or vacancies you have, those specific areas that you outlined, tell us which ones then we train for you. We want to train for you, but through your influence on the curriculum. Is it okay? Yes. Now we're talking. Now we are talking. Yes. And that is why we will be playing this video. And please make sure that your contact details, your everything is clearly spelled here and written for us to be able to communicate with you after this. But the Demakai, they are not going to leave without our struggling to read as a teacher but I want them to be able to look at what they have written here and give you proper uh, contact details, email addresses, cell phone numbers, if possible. We need to get your consent. We don't want you to take us to court to say, I never gave you my number. Um, so we, we, we want to collaborate. Any industry, we had tourism, we had funeral services, We've got a uh, motor industry, we've got uh, the marketing. Yes, come over. Okay, I don't know. Yes. Okay, okay. So I'm not really technical, but I just want to add to what he's saying in terms of the shortage of skills. The other thing that I'm uh, realizing is that the industry is going the route of, for instance, they've now introduced electrical vehicles. So that's one skill for the future that will be in demand because those vehicles will start to, you know, there'll be more and more of those vehicles on the road. And then soon those vehicles will be coming into the workshops. And we are starting to realize that we need more auto elects than uh, diesel technicians. And also on the, because we have a passenger and a commercial vehicle section. So also the commercial vehicle section is where the, the shortage is um, currently. So uh, for instance, with us, we don't take petrol te uh, apprentices anymore. We only take diesel apprentices anymore. And they need to have, uh, what is it? Uh, motor trade uh, theory, the electrical, the technical guys who know more than me. So that's just one of those things that where the industry is going uh, currently, I just wanted to add on there. Thank you. Wow, An African head discussion. Wah! Say wah. That's it. Um, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Johannes of Global Village Museum. I can see here then the top uh, is Motel, uh, Fit College, and the private sector. I'm on the museum. Uh, I had a private museum, so I don't see it. 
being said about the museum here. So actually, the very same uh, issues that have been said is true about the marketing museum because we are on tourism also. So we had some students also who were doing uh, accounting. The problem with my laptop is one day software. So on that issue also, I think Motel will have to attend to it because I said to them, I don't have a software for the computer. And uh, another thing is for funding. We depend on funding. That's why I was saying we are not private sector. We are MPO. So we deal uh, we don't make uh, money. Now we would like to include your student in the museums because uh, on tourism also because as uh, Mr. Hill have said it's uh, one of the biggest or the second in, in, in the, uh, GDP of the country. So because also we also for me to make the uh, museum because I travel around the world uh, in, around in Germany also and, you know so it's another thing that we need to encourage our students about the museums uh, the tourism and uh, lastly also is if the motel because we want people who are, who are specialized in funding uh, to train your student for how can we get the funding because we know how to get it but we need the student because we depend 100% on funding. Wow, Motel! Wow! Let, let me reply to uh, the uh, museum. Um, it's an NPO as I understand, so there is a very uh, good website, and maybe you have a pen, or we, it's called fundsforngos.org, it's by the United Nations, and it's uh, there you find many foundations, funding opportunities, there's a filter, you can filter for funding opportunities in South Africa, and you're also on that website, it will teach you how to write a good funding proposal, so I find that website, uh, it's a treasure trove for how to uh, do sustainable fundraising and fundraising. Like anything else, it's a skill that can be learned. It also has to do with uh, stakeholder management, with donor management, how you engage the base, like, like a, a set of donors, and then you work with them and you always find uh, new donors. So um, that's a very good point. Thank you very much. Now I'll help you a little bit on this uh, website. You're also welcome to visit me in my office in the marketing department and then I can give you some more information. We um, have come, um, is there, there is like it's the next uh, point, it's some steps. The principle is already set, so I will see line. We will be um, re-watching or watching the recording and uh, take down the main points and we also will share with you via the email so that's why it's important for us to um, if you correct email it's which is easily readable and we will share the the main points of this discussion with you and um, one of the main um, points for me to take away is that this is not only the events it's like a continuous process of engagement and this is what we're hoping to start or continue or kick off today, whatever word you like. So, um, can we give you 20 marketing team and students? 20 for placement already. Yes. So, with the day and the course. My name is Tepiso Mulekwa. Uh, I am 
responsible for working with the implementation the placement of the There's something very difficult in the and the easy thing that, however, we were not as rich in the One thing that I have learned, one thing that I learned is that the incubation of the students in certain organizations does not start when they acquire the students. It starts while they are still in class. Now, the two remedies for them are already complete, and I would like to ask this question. The first remedy is that now I'm writing this question. The first remedy is that, the first remedy is that I would like to invite um, to our work on the workshops. This is the workshops that we do for our students in Mexico. We call our educational students to be warm. We invite our prospective employers, we invite citizens, we invite everyone, every stakeholder that is in touch Then that is where you get to the opportunity to meet the students while they're still in So you get to talk to them while they're still in class and they to come to the meetings. But also prior to that, you have something called the capital, which is the work that you start You may spoke to the about it. What happens is that over um, the period of process, when the college closes, we require students to go to the workplaces for the of five to ten days, to be placed for the five to ten days whilst they are still in class, so that they can start doing their practical whilst they are still in class. So now that gives you as employers the opportunity to train the students even before they can actually come to you for the education. So I would like your community to participation in the of So it would be very important. Um, I would be proud of I would be proud of the students who are going to come into the workplaces for those who walk the community. I would be nice to participate in the work of the students. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just been informed the principal has to go for another meeting and um, so we already said we want to share the main points with you via email and um, the next point would have been cultural performance unfortunately this is not happening so we will move straight to um, the network dinner hopefully um, so when you look over there to the other room I think the food would be served from the outside um, we're serving some food and um, there will also be some soft drinks unfortunately no beer <laughs> but maybe we can do this um, afterwards ah uh, yeah I see one of our council members thank you very much thank you very much uh, Mr. Thomas uh, I'm just standing to say thank you for the engagement and <clears throat> Thank you for stakeholders to be part of us. We really need you. Uh, we really need your commitment. And this commitment is not to us. I must say it. This commitment is to your children. Because we don't want to produce unemployable students. And of course, you are contributing towards the development of the future of South Africa. What we need, we need technical vocational skills. And for us to offer those skills, we can't offer those skills without you, because those skills is with you. We want to provide for these skills for future and that skills for future is not in this college. And that skills for future is with you. That's why we need you. And obviously for us to be a responsive college, we will only be responsive to your needs if you inform and work with us in terms of what are those needs and how should we respond. So I'm seeing this exercise, colleagues, as an exercise that says, 
Let's start an engagement. Let's start a conversation. A conversation that must not end in this room. A conversation that you must take back to your your industries, back to your your drawing board, where you discuss these issues. That there is a national crisis, and the national crisis is that wherever we are, whether it's about load shading, whether it's about uh, poverty, unemployment, the the crux of the matter is that we don't have responsive skills to those challenges. And we are tasked as, as colleges to respond to those needs. And I'm saying the benefit thereof is also for you to be, uh, benefit in terms of the innovation of our students. Use that innovation also to build your company. Use that innovation of young people also to build your market in one or the other. At the end, we'll then be talking about employability. Then our student will be employable. Then we can be able to offer what is required by our country. And secondly, your partnership will assist us to introduce our student, our youth, to the modern technology in advance. There's no need for us to talk about emails when technology or you talk about effects, when technology is no longer talking about effects. And how will we know that we are no longer relevant? We'll only know from you, not anyone else. So that is why we need you. We need you because the equipment that we might be using to train the student might be 